A beautiful look at the Arlington downtown Hot Springs and just a short jump from there is where you find us. We are inside Bank OZAK Arena for the final championship match of the evening. And we've got maybe the biggest heavyweights in the state as it's the Centennial Bank State Volleyball Championship presented by Everett Buick GMC. And I guess the challenger, if you call it a heavyweight title match, has got to be Southside, even though they've been to the state championship game now four times in the last five years. Madison Fitzpatrick is alongside Bobby Swafford, but Southside is, uh, well, they're not an underdog to most, but they're certainly an underdog today. Oh, 100%. I mean, just watching Fayetteville warm up, they have got some heavy hitters, and they are here to play today. Lydia Pitts leads the way for Southside, just a sophomore, but 362 kills and an impressive 380 hitting percentage. Yeah, Coach said even as a sophomore, she acts and she plays like a senior, just the mental and physical maturity that she has. She said no matter what, you can't get her riled up, even in these high-pressure pressure situation so I know they're probably going to look to Lydia a lot here tonight. Yeah let's take a look at the south side starting lineup uh, for the Lady Mavs who come into this record at 30 and 7 head coach Natalie Throneberry took over in 2019 as the head coach joined south side as an assistant coach in 2010 also played at south side and won a state championship or two under then head coach coach Hauser uh, now we can see the lineup they're going to roll out there tonight facing a Fayetteville team that is ranked number five in the nation, 36-2 and two, as we take a look at the lineup that is absolutely loaded. Five Division I commits, and we'll start at the top of the top two, Kennedy Phelan, but also Brooke Rockwell, who's committed to play at Stanford. Yeah, Brooke Rock Rockwell, coach, said she's really explosive, really fast off the ground, super fiery. Uh, and she says she's the setter security blanket, word for word. The setter looks to her to get the job done. 495 kills on the season in just 38 matches. You do the math. I'm not a great math guy, but that's double digits. <laughs> it also plays around the full rotation, 233 digs. Second on the team with 64 aces. She does it all. Of course, Fayetteville is going to look to her to get the job done when they might find into a bind. This is not the first time these teams have met each other this year either. This is the third time Fayetteville and Southside, of course, competitors in the 6A West squaring off. Fayetteville won both of those in a sweep. I guess I should probably should mention before at some point, Fayetteville has not lost a set to anybody from the state of Arkansas this year. So, of course, they're looking to complete a sweep and complete what many are considering the best season of any high school volleyball team in Arkansas history. We are almost set for the final match of the day. And if any indication of the previous match, the 5A championship, we should be locked in for a good one as Fayetteville is taking on Southside. Now, Southside head coach, Coach Roneberry. Now, that's a fun last name. Uh, she said the theme of the year is grit. So I think if they're going to come out this game with a win, they're going to have to use that theme and put it to the test and really be gritty. Southside pulled what some would consider an upset in the semifinals as they took down Conway. Not only knocked off the Wampus Cats, but completed a sweep. A lot of people thought it was going to be Conway who ran the table in the 6A Central and Fayetteville, but the Lady Mavs had something to say about that, and they're hoping to well, put an end to Fayetteville's dream season. And the Lady Bulldogs are the defending state champion. Uh, they've got six titles to their name in school history, including the last two, so we're looking for another three-peat. It's been kind of a theme uh, this weekend as we are getting set for first serve right here inside Bank OZK Arena. Southside, the visiting team on the scoreboard. We're in the Columbia Blue. Fayetteville, we're in the black and purple. And just like that, Fayetteville's offense goes on the attack. And that's our first look at number six, Reagan Harp. She's committed to play at the University of Central Arkansas. A 5'6 senior and doesn't have a lot of size as far as height, but boy, she can get off the ground. Oh, yeah, she can. And she's got those long arms. She hits that ball at the top and just snaps. And that was a really good swing by her. Talking with Coach Feeling earlier this week as that service is going to go down as an ace. Uh, Coach Feeling said they don't they aren't the tallest team, not the, the tallest Fables had in recent history, but they are explosive. We saw them in warm up. They can get off the ground, and you mentioned it. They put the ball straight down. A 
little miscommunication there. Another ace for Fayetteville, and you can tell the nerves are already sitting there for Southside, even though they're used to playing in this championship game. Lining up against a, a Fayetteville star set of squad like this has got to be a little bit intimidating. Oh, 100%. And the key to this is going to be, like I said before, grit. you got to shake off the nerves. You have to eliminate the jersey on the other side of the net. Don't think about who you're playing and just play Southside Volleyball. Rock Rockwell's first attempt goes back to her, and she hammers that one home. Brooke Rockwell, 496 kills now on the season. Impressive player, as I mentioned in the opening. She's going to Stanford. Here's a good look at try number two. Just puts it down, and Fayetteville's already out to a 4-0 lead. Super quick arm, uh, arm swing by Rockwell. The block for Fayetteville looking impressive so far. And now a tip. See if Southside can mount a good attack. You can tell that Southside's just a little bit out of sorts, and that was deflected, and now the Lady Mavs are going to get on the board. There's the grit that we were talking about, the defense. No matter the hitter on the other, other side of the net, you get underneath the ball and you pass it up. Defense is going to win them this game. Yep, Southside just needs to settle in. Of course, it's a, a long way to go. We call it a marathon, not a sprint. Nice job, Barry Walkwell, to take a little off that one, find the hole in the middle of the defense. Her second kill of the match already, now 5-1 Lady Bulldogs. So smart and so deceptive. She comes in really strong with a big approach, making it look like she's going to swing deep, and then she drops her shoulder and just gives a little roll shot to the hole. That service into the net. Cheap point for Southside. They'll certainly take anything they can to kind of stop the bleeding early. This is a good look at Tinsley Freeman, the libero for Southside. She was a player that Coach Throneberry told us to keep an eye on. 56 aces on the season. Coach said if you tell her to run through a wall, she will. And I guess that's what you want out of your libero. Nice set by Phelan. And you can just see the teamwork. You can tell these two have been this Playing aside one another so much, just an effortless pass from Phelan, and Rockwell throws it down. Chemistry between a passer, a setter, and a hitter is so important. They obviously have really good chemistry, setter and hitter making really good connection. And then you see Rockwell's range, and we'll have a football. And a football, the first time we've seen that in five matches today. And a lot of the times with the jump top spin, like Rockwell just did, you're really going for it. You foot fault a little bit more than if you were just going to do a float. Trying to get as close to that line as possible. The old, you're not cheating, you're not trying. I got caught that time. <laughs> That's a first look at Madden Lafada. She's another one of these Fayetteville Lady Bulldogs going to play at Division I. The lefty, 5'11", senior going to Dartmouth. 364 hitting percentage this year. It's a fantastic hitting percentage. And you see why. She has so much power and she is so strong. Behind every single kill, it's a ton of speed. Yep, another service there for Fayetteville. So if you're looking for a, a chink in the armor early on for the Lady Bulldogs, it has been the service game. And I'm sure Southside is very appreciative of that. <laughs> Thronberry did tell us yesterday that they're a team that, if they're going to be successful, they have to limit their own errors and force their opponents into making errors. Fayetteville helping out a little bit so far. But Lafada, another big swing with the left hand and another kill. It might be because we're sitting down, but the angle that we're at, it looks like she's jumping about five <laughs> feet into the air. Yep. You can just tell the length of the arms of these Fayetteville players, too. And of course, you being a former college volleyball player at Florida State, you just know the importance, not necessarily of height, but also of length. Height, length, yes. 100% because that gives you the advantage over the blocker. You're able to put the ball down a little bit better. A nice job there by Southside. As they answer right back, Alice, or excuse me, that's Lydia Pitts. Looking at the wrong roster there. 5'10 sophomore for the Lady Mavs. Just puts one down right in the middle of the Fayetteville squad. And I'll go ahead and apologize now. Probably at some point, I'll probably call them the Lady Rebs. That's what the <laughs> south side was the Rebels for so long. I've tried to get it out of my brain as that one's put down by Rockwell. But you, know, you hear something for so long, it just kind of it kind of pops up every now and then. Rockwell with the back row attack. So far, we've seen a lot of range from her. We've seen the roll shot, we've seen the deep corner swing, and then we've seen the back row attack. 
9-5 Fayetteville here in the opening set of this 6A state championship game. A quick set there for Southside. Couldn't take advantage of it, though. Harp. Her attack is thwarted. And nice job there by Southside to answer back. Gabby Dupree, another sophomore. Southside is loaded with underclassmen. 293 kills now on the season for the 5'11 outside hitter. It's a really good spot by her. And while they might not be as powerful as Fayetteville, they can still find the holes and play smart volleyball. Nice block there from the south side front. Wow. See if their offense can take advantage of it. Nice dig coming in, Mia Bedke. A little scramble drill, south side does get it over. But he can't give Fayetteville too many opportunities and a big time hammer dropped again by Rockwell. My mouth is gaped open. <laughs> Look at that tight set, but she's she jumped so high, just got that snap on the ball with the power behind it. That's her fifth kill of the night, hitting six, six, seven. Nice tip there by Southside to earn a cheapy. Sophia Nyhouse. Sophia Nyhouse, excuse me. 5'9", junior, 21 there in the middle. She saw all that open court and took advantage of it. 10-7, Lady Bulldogs out in front. That serve goes long. I guess if, you know, of course you don't like to compare matches throughout the day. We're talking two-way all the way through 6A, but if there has been one consistent and it has been the service game going, going long for most of the day. It's very true, and that's just a testament to the nerves and the high stakes. You put a lot of power behind that because you got a lot of energy. You're revved up for the game. Southside's first attempt blocked at the net. And now we'll see if Fayetteville can take advantage with their offense. Lafada, she tries to go down the line but misses. First miss for Lafada. And Lafada being a left-hander, it makes it so hard for the blocker to read her arm and to block that swing. So definitely an advantage for her. 11-8. Southside trailing, but on the serve. Rockwell right in the middle. She scored it again. The Southside defense right in the middle and elevated it. Pitts, 73rd block of the season for the 5'10 sophomore. She just has a really good read on the ball. She saw that Rockwell wanted to swing cross, and she dove into that angle a little bit, dropped her right hand, and got the block. How much gamesmanship goes, in, goes into it? You're setting up a block, but you know a player across from you can either go down the line, they can go across the court. Is it, you, you, you had guessed, you try to read their eyes. How do you, how do you read that? You read their shoulder, uh, which, which sounds a little funny now that I'm saying it, but that's just what I've been told my entire <laughs> life. You look at their shoulder, and, and somehow playing volleyball, you just know what that means. Yeah. La Fata. Answers right back there, a left-handed swing from the other side and puts it down for the kill. Pushes that advantage for Fayetteville back to three. Nice serve right on the line. South side, a little miscommunication. You, you, know, yep, you can't give Fayetteville a free ball yeah. because good teams like that, they're going to have a perfect pass and a perfect set and put the ball away immediately. Yeah, Libby Lindsay comes off the bench and she gets the kill there, 83rd spike of the season. Southside trying to answer back as they trail by four. Lafada blocked at the net. That's one thing that's already sticking out in my mind, Madison, is Southside at the net defensively is strong, but not strong enough there. Nope, not strong enough there at all. That was a, a pretty fast set, and then her arm swing is just so quick. So she gets up and just, even in the slow-mo, you can tell how fast her arm swing is, and then the blocker, the middle blocker for Southside couldn't get there in time. 11 kills for Fayetteville of their first 14 points, and that one's gonna go long for Southside. And this is the, I think, believe this is the largest lead now for the Lady Bulldogs, sitting at six. Southside's going to need to stop them soon before they go on an even longer run. Fayetteville hitting 409 as a team already. Wow. I haven't seen that stat all day. That's impressive. Southside tries to answer, and we'll see what that one's going to be, say, deflected by Fayetteville and hits the pin, which indicates out of bounds near the official. So. Southside does stop the run momentarily. A 
Messed that one up. Fayetteville will get credit for that point. Yep, yeah. yep, yep. My fault. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, Southside hit it into the antenna. I don't think it tooled her. So 16-9, Fayetteville. Quick set in the middle and the tip there nicely placed by Pitts for Southside. I'll tell you what, Pitts loves that little dink right over the block. She sees the hole and she's gone after it twice now and both have been kills. You see her with the big approach and yep. I've never seen a tip like that, but it works. <laughs> <laughs> you see Fayetteville sent three defenders to Pitts right there in the middle and this tips it over all three. Mm -hmm. Fata, another big strike right at the net. And she's having herself a huge opening set. She and Rockwell both have five kills, and Coach Throneberry's seen enough for now as they're going to take a timeout. 17-10, so we'll take it with them. We step aside as you're watching the Centennial Bank State Volleyball Championship presented by Everett's View of GMC. You're watching it right here on Arkansas PBS Sports. Centennial Bank is committed to you. Since our founding in 1999, we've become one of the nation's most trusted banks by remembering that you come first. By empowering our communities to reach their highest potential through our dedication to local charities, education, and exceptional service. Because we are proud to call Arkansas home. Banking with you in mind, Centennial Bank, member FDIC. Welcome back inside Bank OZK Arena, Fayetteville. A heavily favored number one team in the state, number five in the country. Already out to a 17-10 lead on conference rival Southside. <laughs> These two teams uh, have scored off more times than not. Conference play, tournament play, championship play. Southside has the third most state championships in state history. They've got eight. The last one, though, came back in 2013. They've been to the title game for the last five years, but they've been a bridesmaid all four times. Well, the first <laughs> three times, I should say. Trying to avoid that today. You see Rockwell tries to put one down from behind, and that one finally does catch the orange vinyl, as we found out earlier today. <laughs> playing surface is made of. Yep. One thing that I'm very impressed with is Kennedy, number four, the setter's defense. Even though she's the setter, if they're going to hit the ball to her, she's a really good defender as well. 209 digs coming into this championship match for Kennedy Phelan. Nice job there for Southside. Just take what the defense will give you, find a hole, and that's exactly what Riley twisted, the 5'7 junior. Yep, that's where Southside's been most effective, that tip right over the block. Twist has been active this season, 160 kills now. Harp didn't catch all of that one, but Southside's defense had to scramble a touch. And that one goes right into the net, so Southside's put together back-to-back -to -back points and see if they can inch their way back into this set. Obviously, the first set's going to set the tone for the evening. Momentum so big. We've seen four sweeps today. Mm -hmm. Nice attack there again by Pitts, and you can tell the Southside offense runs through her, her ninth attempt, but third kill of the match. Yep, you can tell she's their reliable hitter. So the setter's going to set her a lot to get those kills. Felicity Suggs on the serve. But Lafada again, you can just, it's just so tough, that left-handed swing coming from outside of the antenna, coming back in, and you just, just don't know where she's going to put it. And also, it's coming with such velocity, even if it hit, goes right into your arms, you got to be strong enough to, to get it back over the other side. Yep, that's what I was going to say. You have to really lock out your arms if you're going to block her because she has so much strength. She's just going to kind of push you over if you're not really strong up there. And a really good effort there from south side. Sariana Tefts, but she goes into the, the media table. Another point for Fayetteville, 2013's her score. A little knuckler just does clear the, the net. That's the first short serve I've seen all day. Thielen tries to go up for one, a nice job defensively for Southside to knock it down. The net stands seven feet, four and a quarter inches, and I think that serve went seven foot, five inches. <laughs> and it barely just made it over. But Southside able to 
rally back and win the point. Yep, the short serve usually effective in getting another team out of system. That attack goes long. South side just hanging around. 2015's our tally. Now that's Kennedy's first two attempts at hitting it. It makes sense to have a few errors right off the bat until she gets warmed up. Go to her third time, and that time she does get it down. And that's the sign of a mature player. You made two errors, you're gonna take a little bit of heat off of it, get consistent, and, and get the feel of it before you start to full out swing again. So you see feeling 940 assists on the year. Obviously that leads the team. Is it normal to have someone who's the, dis the distributor be also fourth on your team in kills? No, it's not normal, and that's a huge compliment to her. She's going to play indoor and beach at Florida State. And that's where you kind of get the beach skill. She's good at a little bit of everything. She can hit, she can set, she can dig, she can do it all. So she's going to be a really good beach and indoor player for them. Nice attack there. That one goes wide in Fayetteville now. Just three points away from taking this opening set. And Coach Thronberry going to take a timeout for Southside. So we'll take it with them. 22-15, Fayetteville out in front in the opening set. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Volleyball Championship presented by Everett View at GMC. Can you see her greatness? When you attend her games, when you cheer her on, or when you participate in any way, you support your community and make it better, and you will see her greatness. Join us as we pledge to increase the visibility of women's sports in our communities. It makes a difference when we all are involved. At Everett Butte GMC, we proudly support our local female athletes and encourage you to do the same. See her greatness. We're back. First set is nearing a conclusion as Fayetteville, just three points away from taking this ever important first set. And Madison Fitzpatrick, Bobby Swafford here talking volleyball. And you know, we, we mentioned it earlier in the, the broadcast. And but how important is the first set? I mean, of course, we've seen four sweeps today, so it's obviously, you know, step out on the limb there. It's really important. But just momentum is so big, especially at the high school game. Oh, exactly. Momentum is everything. And we've seen it happen four times today. The team that comes out most confident, swinging the hardest, playing the most consistent, consistently, will have the momentum and take it into all three. So if Fayetteville can take this first set, they definitely have a huge advantage moving forward. That's a great job by Gabby Dupree coming out of the timeout. Number nine right there pictured on your looky box. Puts one down. Harp on the attack for Fayetteville, and she answers right back. And I believe you called that a twist earlier. A, a slide. Loop, a slide. <laughs> well, trying to get the, the technical jargon. That's when an attacker kind of loops around the setter. Uh, kind of, I, I guess, confuses the defense ever so slightly and gets a different angle. Exactly. You're the middle hitter. You're going to wrap around behind. It's going to make the blocker go with you and kind of confuse the defense. Yeah, listen. <laughs> yeah, you do. Nice job by Southside there to find out where the Fayetteville defense was it. 23-17. Can't just go trade point for point, though, if you're south side. Got to put together a run. And it's going to fall on the service of Gabby Dupree. Not a bad one, though. 46 aces on the season. Rockwell's attack is dug out. And nice job by Fayetteville. Thought that one might have caught the antenna. It didn't. But south side able to just dink one over. And find the middle of the unoccupied defense, Nyhaus with the point. So she comes in, she hides it pretty well, and there's still space right there. Tip it right into the open court. That's where she's been most effective. There's a serve by Dupree. Dug out on the back row for Fayetteville's Weilert. And then put down by Rockwell. The range of Rockwell, I've said it once, I'll probably end up saying it a few times, is just incredible. She can hit probably every single spot on the court, and I think she already has, and it's just the first set. Yep, she's one of the few high school volleyball players you'll pl see play around the rotation. Fayetteville, though, excuse me, Southside coming right back, a big kill right in the middle. So the Lady Mavs not going away quietly. If you're south side, you just want to stay aggressive. You want to gain some momentum. It's okay if you don't win the first set, but you want to get momentum for the second. Nyhouse credited with the kill there, but that service goes wide, and that's going to be the first set for the Lady Bulldogs of Fayetteville, the two-time defending state champion. 
has got the upper hand. 25-19 is your score in set number one. We're going to step aside. Quick timeout, set number two coming up as you're watching the Centennial Bank State Volleyball Championship presented by Everett Buick GMC. You're watching it on Arkansas PBS Sports. Sports is, is so important to this state and the fabric of the state. And I appreciate Arkansas PBS doing all the state title games. And that makes it available for not just the fans in central Arkansas, or south Arkansas, but fans around the entire state. I can only think of the kids in small towns, and this is the biggest moment maybe in their sports careers. And they have that keepsake of having that game on TV to have with them the rest of their lives. During the past year, we've been traversing the natural state with our cinematic drone from lakes and rivers, waterfalls, scenic byways, mountains, swamps, overlooks, and towering rock formations. This unique documentation of all four seasons from all four corners of the state with an aerial cinematic perspective will give you, the viewer, an Arkansas adventure like never before, exploring Arkansas from above. Download the PBS video app or watch online. Thanks, George. Appreciate it. At Big Red Stores, we're always proud to sponsor, support, and partner up with many events and activities throughout the community. Among them, high school championships throughout the state of Arkansas. At Big Red Stores, our team members are always ready to assist you to make your visit with us a pleasant one. And at Big Red Stores, we recognize that none of our support or ability to serve the community is possible without you. That's why, at Big Red Stores, you're always the MVP of the Big Red team. Big Red Stores, now more convenient than ever. Centennial Bank is committed to you. Since our founding in 1999, we've become one of the nation's most trusted banks by remembering that you come first, by empowering our communities to reach their highest potential through our dedication to local charities, education, and exceptional service, because we are proud to call Arkansas home. Banking with you in mind. Centennial Bank, member FDIC. For every moment, for every memory, from that first car, to your first home, to your first child, and all the highs and lows that tomorrow might bring. For everything that matters most to you and your family, there's someone right around the corner dedicated to helping you protect what you love. Your local Farm Bureau insurance agent. Farm Bureau insurance. Real service. Real people. Your Arkansas PBS student all-star for 6A is Kennedy Metter. She's playing here tonight. Southside High School, setter, senior, 4.26 GPA. Yeah, that's correct. She plans to major in biology, attend medical school, and become a pediatrician specializing in neurology. So she is very smart. That's your Arkansas PBS student all-star for 6A. Congratulations, Kennedy. You know, for the longest time, I never knew the GPA went above four. <laughs> and now, you're, now you're throwing 4.26 at me, and she's about to change the world. So congratulations to Kennedy Matters for being smarter than my GPA and even knew it went up that high. <laughs> <laughs> Fayetteville took the opening set, and now they take the lead to start set number two as guess who, Brooke Rockwell, hammers one home. My grandma sometimes says volleyball is like poetry in motion, and that was poetry. The jump set, it looks like she could go on two, and then she just sets her outside, and fantastic kill. Yeah, going on two means going across the net on just the second hit, correct? Yes, yes, correct. Right. Catch the other team off guard. Nice job by Southside there. Sophia Nyhaus is having herself a nice evening so far. Six kills already in the match. Hitting 545, so every other time she puts it into attack, good things are happening for the Lady Mavs. Fantastic hitting percentage. Harp answers right back. Reagan Harp. I might have misspoke earlier. I think I th she's six foot one going to UCA. Third on the team in kills with 213. There's a lot of teams that would love to have that as your leader. Oh, 100% with those long arms. And you saw with that hit, she just kind of swat it down. And that's what you do when you're that tall. You just swat the ball. Nice effort there for Fayetteville. They couldn't answer back to Nyhouse. 
She's had a lot of success in the middle. She and Pitts, but Southside has to find some way to get a little more offense from a few different players on the floor to kind of keep Fayetteville's defense off balance. Exactly, Nyhaus doing a good job of it so far, but it'd be nice to get other players involved. Rockwell, that one dug out though by the libero for Southside, Freeman. That's that's the two touch you were talking about earlier. Yep. You know, that jump set, you, you kind of lulls you to sleep and feeling caught the south side defense off guard there, and here's going to be a good look at it. And this finds the hole. A cheap, easy point for Fayetteville. I've been waiting for that. It's so deceptive. It's almost impossible for south side to see coming. Nice attack there for south side. Fayetteville will get it over. They do. They do a nice job in the scramble drill. Nyhouse attacks right into the middle. And the three bodies there for Fayetteville couldn't keep it out. Nyhouse is giving Fayetteville a run for their money with three blockers there and just sneaking it right past them. We've seen that a lot from Fayetteville's defense. Is, is that a normal defensive scheme, especially as, I guess if you're facing someone as dominant as Nyhouse has been? Yep, if you are a really high level playing team like Fayetteville is and you know you're going up against a pretty good hitter, if all three of your blockers can get there, you should get them there. Yeah, obviously Southside can't do the same with so many weapons on the side for Fayetteville. Lafada finds the orange turf. What a pass there. Southside, though, trying to answer back. And Yes, that's the thing that's so, so unique about what Fayetteville can do is it doesn't matter where they are on the floor or where she sets it, feel it, and can put it right pretty much anywhere, but Southside's having none of it. Doesn't matter as they hammer that one home. Now, Southside's staying in it. They're not shying away. A lot of the times if another team beats you, you're going to get a little, a little tentative, maybe do more tipping, a little roll shot. But no, Southside's staying aggressive, which is exactly what they need to do if they want to stand a chance. There's Malia Neal on the serve. We're all squared up at four piece here in set number two. Rockwell tries to deliver from behind the second line, but that one sails long, and I believe this will be Southside's first lead of the match. Yep, maybe get them some momentum. We see a replay here. Rockwell going for it, but just slightly out. Great job by Dupree to recognize there's too much steam on that one. Let's it go by. Job by the block again by the south side front. Good coverage. Lafada again trying to find the hole in the middle of that south side defense, but can't. Nice job closing by the Lady Mavs. And quick set from Phelan. Again, this is one of the best points of the night. What a rally. Can Fayetteville put it away? Excellent positioning on both sides. That one deflected and finally finds the floor. And Southside wins a marathon of a point. Lydia Pitts with the kill. Lady Mavs up 6-4. Lydia Pitts coming up big in that play. Whenever long rallies go like that, the winner of that point, it's almost like they get two points. That's how much momentum you get. See if Southside can take advantage. They can't. That serve goes long. That's, that's a brutal break there for Southside. You want to be able to take advantage of that long point, and you don't get an opportunity to do so because of the long serve. Exactly. You really want to capitalize off that point. That's Ashley Ruff, the serve for Fayetteville. Nice block there in the middle. Harp. Elevates and sends it back to which it came from. Fantastic block straight down, and, and that's why you have two people on the middle sometimes. We got Lindsay and Harp closing that block, pressing over the net, and there was nowhere for that middle hitter to go. Yeah, just nowhere to put it. Six all. Nice tip there again by Southside. Pitts is. 
trying to exploit the middle of that defense. Maybe that's something they saw during the state tournament or four. The, the two times they faced them early, maybe not, it's not rotating quick enough, or maybe this is how they line up defensively. Southside trying to take advantage of that little hole. Yep, usually if you're Fayetteville, you want to see that the hitter drops their shoulder and looks like they're going to tip. You usually try and read that and then crash in, but Fayetteville having a hard time reading that. Yep. No trouble reading that one. Lafada puts it down with authority. It's so fun to watch. That is such a fast swing. I don't know if it translates to television, but it sounds different when it comes <laughs> off her hands. It does. It's like a pow. Again, Southside trying to find that hole. That time Fayetteville converges, keeps the point alive. Oh, well, they're going to say that one caught the line. Called it in. Yep, Coach Jessica Phelan didn't like that call, but that one's going to go the way of Southside. And that's why you go for those lines, because on the occasion they land in and the defender's not close to it or they let it go because they think it's going out. So Southside's gone for that little hole. I call it the hole. It's right, right behind the block. And so now that maybe that forces the back row to creep up a little bit, and that's why you try to gun for that, I guess, that back line. That's exactly why. That serve goes wide left. And it evens it up at eight. This is what I wanted to see from Southside, just staying in it. Fayetteville's going to have those big swings. They have those players, but they make those plays, and you're like, okay, now it's our turn. goes right into the net and Rockwell frustrated with herself. Knew she had an open lane but missed it. And that was a hard swing to hit. She tried to go at that left handed. That was a pretty tough one. But you see there from the middle hitter, they have three players blocking her. That one goes long. So South side's taken a lead a few different times and not been able to add to it because of service errors. South side's hitting percentage this set is 273 and Fayetteville's only hitting 158 so Southside doing a little bit better with hitting efficiency this game. And when you're playing a team like Fayetteville you can't give away any points a nice job there you know, by Niehaus to excuse me Niehaus to find a hole but I was going to finish that thought you can't give Fayetteville extra points in five service errors for the Lady Mavs. Exactly you really have to eliminate those errors you can't give them any free points because they're going to get so many points on their own you can't give them any. Here's Dupree most talented sophomores for Coach Stromberry. That one blocked at the net. Nice job by Southside defensively. Rockwell right back at her. Nice job again. Southside doing a great job at the block, and it forces Fayetteville to take the first timeout. Lady Mavs 11-9 here in the second. We've got a good one. We're going to step aside as you're watching the Centennial Bank State Volleyball Championship presented by Everett Buick GMC. Centennial Bank is committed to you. Since our founding in 1999, we've become one of the nation's most trusted banks by remembering that you come first. By empowering our communities to reach their highest potential through our dedication to local charity, education, and exceptional service. Because we are proud to call Arkansas home. Banking with you in mind. Centennial Bank. Member FDIC. There's a good look at the stats. The attacks are even. The kills. Advantage of three for Fayetteville. And a few service errors have gone the Lady Bulldogs way. And that's why they have a 1-0 set lead, but they're trailing in set number two. The south side appears to have a little momentum as Fayetteville just burns the first of their second time, first of two timeouts, I should say, and in this set. Yep, south side's got eight kills and Fayetteville has five so far this set. So, and a lot of those kills had, has come from Niehaus. Yep. South side actually out hitting Fayetteville for the match, 259 to 241. Of course, there's still a lot of time, a lot of match to be played. Rockwell puts that one into the net, though. She tried to go cross court with it, just caught a little too much tape. And now a three-point advantage. And it's hard when you're off the net. That set was a little bit off the net. She tried to cut it too sharp. And when you're off the net, you can't cut it that sharp. Feeling. Nice attack there. Kind of came into it at an awkward angle. 
Couldn't elevate as much as she normally does, but does find just enough of the ball and puts it down. It's a sign of a good athlete. You don't have to have the full approach every time, but you've got the hand contact. You can jump up and place the ball where you want it to go. And reflex is always so important in volleyball because you're never going to get, you can't assume a perfect set, so you have to be ready for anything. Exactly. Mafata, she tries to go cross court. Nice save there by Southside. Wow. One more time for Lafada. They're right there. Nice defensive rotation. Good read. Rockwell again goes cross court. Nice job. You can just tell these two teams don't know what the other's going to do. Uh, could, couldn't be handled there by Weilerts. And Southside pushes that advantage back to three. Southside with the incredible defense. It seems like they're getting a better read on Fayetteville's shoulder. And they seem to know where the ball is going to go and they're in the right spots at the right time. Third meeting this season between these two. Rockwell, there's just no stopping that. And that's his perfect offense and she hammers one. The hang time on Rockwell is really incredible. She's going to play beach volleyball at Stanford. And so you've got to be able to jump high in the sand and she's going to do really well with that. Of course, we're all used to beach volleyball in the Olympics. How new is that as, a, as a, a collegiate sport? Yep, I think it's about seven years. It's the fastest growing NCAA sport in history. Many schools are picking it up every single year. It's really growing and a lot more players, as you see, even in Arkansas, are going to play beach volleyball. Yeah, they put that one down to Fayetteville. And the University of Central Arkansas has a beach volleyball team, so not far from here. Of course, just north of Little Rock and Conway. The Purple Bears, not really known to play in the sand, but I guess they do there. Mm -hmm. Also, oh. ba Bears aren't really purple. So. No, that's true, but yeah. it's it's pretty. <laughs> As an alumna, I can get away with saying those things. <laughs> Fayetteville on the attack again, a nice block by Southside. 13-12, Lady Maz leading this set. Save there. Fayette will keep it alive. Lafada goes cross court. And Southside's right there to dig it out. What a great tip there. Kennedy feeling the saw. The Southside was out of position, and she just perfectly places it right inside that back line. So smart. Here we go. Southside gave him kind of a free ball, and she said, nope, we're not having it. We're giving it back to you. And a three-point lead for Southside's now gone as we're all tied at 13. My house, her swing goes, well, excuse me, Pitts, her swing goes wide. And Fayetteville regains the advantage. Momentum heavily on Fayetteville's side now, so we're going to see Southside maybe make some errors as, as they start to coil in and get less aggressive. Don't handle that serve. Can Southside now Fayetteville on the attack? Lafada is blocked at the net. Southside can respond. Feeling keeps it alive. Nice dig there. Good long rally. Yeah, high level volleyball right here. Lafada, that one caught the antenna and they catch it. So that's going to be a point for the Lady Mavs. The Lady Mavs sticking in it every single play. Really high level volleyball, super fun to watch. 14 all here in set number two. 6A state championship game. Fayetteville looking for their third straight and their seventh overall championship. Southside trying to add to their already eight titles in school history. Quick set there for Southside, nicely done. Feeling can't dig it out. How big is it for Southside to regain the lead there? As Fayetteville had the, the little rally to, to tie it, then take a quick advantage, but Southside answers right back. Exactly. You don't want to give any more wind underneath Fayetteville's wings. You want to kind of stay within that range and not give them any more confidence than they already have. That's wow. a tough angle there for the lefty, and Lafada still finds a way to put one down. So much power. You see in here. She almost Good. attacked that ball kind of across. Yeah, exactly. Not even a full approach, just sliced it. Sliced off the side of the ball and got it at an angle where Southside wasn't ready. 
Ashley Ruff now on the service. Another quick set there. Fable with the deflection right at the net. They're going to try to attack. So active both of these teams are defensively right at the point of attack. Mm -hmm. just one right after the other. You can just, you know, deflection after deflection. That time a full block. What a quick set there by Phelan, and a harp hammers it down. And Phelan almost made it seem like she was going to go over with that set and try to attack it or send it over deep because she was facing the other side of the court. But no, so deceptive. Sets her middle. All she has to do is snap being so tall. Fayetteville now up 16-15. Another quick set and another big time spike by Harp. That went almost straight down. An absolute beast. Let's take a look here. Fantastic set. Such a fast arm swing. And then you see that little crunch at the end where your whole body seems to come forward. That's because the momentum's in front of her. She's moving forward. And that's what gives that ball so much heat behind it. Not only the velocity, but the angle of it there. Just almost hitting it straight down. Mm -hmm. Near impossible to defend. Rockwell, her attack from the back line. That one, though, catches too much net. Not sure if it got over or blocked or not. Either way, that one point for Southside. They pull back within a single digit, 17-16. Lydia Pitts threw her hands up there for the celebration like she, like she blocked that ball, so let's give it to her. Good defense by Lydia Pitts. See if Southside can take advantage. Lafata, her attack. That's dug out nicely, though, on the back row by Neal. And Fayetteville. Can't answer back there as Southside's Dupree ties this match at 17. That's Dupree's fourth kill of the night, hitting 273. She's third right now on her team for kills. Lafada right in front of us. Nice job there again by the Southside defense. And that one deflected out. Uh, Lady Mass is going to take an 18 17 lead. It's really good work right at the net between 9 and 10 to Pree and Pitts for Southside. They're just finding ways to, to put a little pressure on the Fayetteville defense. Exactly. And, and another thing that the blocker wants to do is they want to funnel the hit to their defenders, and that's what they did right there. They funneled that hit to be cross court straight to Malie Neal, who got the dig. That serve goes long, though, the sixth service error of the match for Southside, and that allows Fayetteville to tie it back up at 18. How many times have we said that, Madison, that Southside's got a chance to take a run, and all of a sudden the service here costs them? Exactly. And, and you don't want that to be your Achilles heel. You don't want it to be the serve. Harp, that quick set. I didn't get all of it. Might have caught her off guard, but got just enough, and Southside's defense couldn't rally to it. And the Lady Bulldogs back in front. That's why it's so important to mix up your shots. Southside's defense was ready for that hard hit that they've been seeing from Harp. She just took a little bit off of it and got the kill. Thielen's attack, sent right back at him. That attack goes just long. Southside didn't like the call. Uh, Fayetteville took a 20 to 18 advantage. And Coach Natalie Thronberry going to take a timeout. You can see just the look on the face of the Lady Maz. They really wanted that call that does not go their way. We'll step aside. Fayetteville, five points away from taking a 2-0 lead. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Volleyball Championship presented by Everview of GMC. Centennial Bank is committed to you. Since our founding in 1999, we've become one of the nation's most trusted banks by remembering that you come first by empowering our communities to reach their highest potential through our dedication to local charities, education, and exceptional service. Because we are proud to call Arkansas home. Banking with you in mind, Centennial Bank, member FDIC. 
Fanville trying to take a 2-0 lead on conference rival Southside here in the 6A state championship match. She's Madison Fitzpatrick. I'm Bobby Swafford. Thanks for joining us tonight on your Saturday evening. As we're here by Inside Bank OZK Arena in Hot Springs. Southside trying to rally back. Nice job defensively to get back, though, for Fayetteville. to the net, Rockwell trying to attack from deep and just didn't catch the right angle of there. Exactly, she hit that ball a little lower than she usually does. Usually she hits it at a higher angle. It was also a lower set, so she had to speed up her approach and just couldn't cut it off at a high enough angle. 2019 Lady Bulldogs add to it as Phelan elevates and drives one home. Phelan's fifth kill of the night. She sets, she hits. Here we see the replay. Look how high she gets. Just the snap on the ball. Really, really hard to dig. Ella Weilert's now on service, a 5'8 senior. 21-19 Fayetteville. Nice serve, but what a great dig there by Freeman. Let's say that hit the antenna. Point for Southside. Looked like the set was just a little too far outside for Rockwell's liking. 21-20, and this is now see if Southside can take advantage. Number one, put it in play off the serve. Mm -hmm. Exactly, this is where they need to make it serve. They do just that. Harp, her attack though. Nice deflection at the net, and Southside gonna take, try to take advantage. Feeling though, having none of it. So athletic and so smart. She feels Southside's defense a little shallow. And so she says, okay, I'm going to hit that ball deep. And they're even shallow on serve receive. Southside plays a very shallow defense. Harp now at service, 22-20, Fayetteville. Rockwell can't get a second touch on that. Southside's defense and Fayetteville now starting to feel that momentum. And Southside really had it in the middle part of this set. And it's starting to slip away, though, as Coach Thronberry is going to take a timeout. But we'll keep it here. And I mean, you could say it a thousand times, and it's probably not enough, just the importance of momentum and just keeping your foot on the pedal when you're, you're facing a team, the quality of not only Fayetteville, but also Southside. Exactly. And a part of keeping your foot on the metal, on the pedal, <laughs> pedal to the metal, yep. is swinging and being aggressive and not tipping. And so we just saw Niehaus with that tip because she felt the pressure from the three blockers. It would have been really crucial for her to say, you know what, I'm, I'm going to swing, I'm going to stop the momentum, and, uh, and just power through more than just getting a little tippy. If you want a copy of today's broadcast, all you've got to do is go to mmproductions.net and place your order. You can watch this classic until you're 95 years old. Hear the melodious tones of Madison Fitzpatrick's voice. Beautiful. 23-20, Fayetteville. Trying to close out set number two. The Lady Bulldogs have not lost a set to a school from the state of Arkansas this year. A little miscommunication for Fayette, or Southside, excuse me, but they keep it alive. Nice job defensively at Rockwell. Right at the net. Another defensive block. Fayetteville coming up huge. A combination of Phelan. And Meg Gebhardt there at the net. And now it's set point for the Lady Bulldogs. They're really putting a wall up at the net, and it's putting a ton of pressure on Southside, causing them to tip. And then when they do hit, they get blocked. Well, that serve right into the net, though. And, you know, I always uh, hate to put too much stock into it, but that championship pedigree and playing in so many big matches this year, you know, national tournaments for Fayetteville, kind of looks like it's showing up in the last six to eight points. 100%. The reps that they get from all those tournaments playing against such high level teams that only makes you better. And it's it's obvious that they're playing at such a high level tonight. Nice dig out there by Southside. Shouldn't take any way thing away from the Lady Mazzo. They're playing exceptional tonight. Mm -hmm. Rockwell, that one deflected, but finds the ground in Fayetteville. Takes a two to nothing set advantage as they take game number two, 25. 21. Can the Lady Bulldogs complete a three-peat? We're going to find out coming up. Set number three just moments away as you're watching the Centennial Bank State Volleyball Championship presented by Everett Buick GMC on Arkansas PBS Sports. 
Can you see her greatness when you attend her games, when you cheer her on, or when you participate in any way? You support your community and make it better, and you will see her greatness. Join us as we pledge to increase the visibility of women's sports in our communities. It makes a difference when we all are involved. At Everett Butte GMC, we proudly support our local female athletes and encourage you to do the same. See her greatness. For more than 50 years, Arkansas PBS has been a trusted resource. Our high-quality programs are seen by viewers in every corner of our state, making on-air sponsorship a solid investment. Aligning your business with Arkansas PBS offers a powerful blend of community engagement, corporate philanthropy, and cause marketing. And our viewers remember and appreciate businesses that support our programs. Contact us today for more information on sponsorship opportunities. We on that next level. We on that next level. Broadcast of this championship game is made possible by the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Over 2,500 team members across 17 local electric distribution co-ops powering homes, farms, and industries somewhere across Arkansas. We are the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Power and people. Okay, Frisbee, let's remember, it's one bark for true and no barks for false. Arkansas PBS is Arkansas's largest classroom. Bark. Frisbee didn't eat my slippers. Oh, Frisbee, how could you? No, I'm sorry, Miss House. I was going to tell you, but it slipped my mind. Please don't let it slip your mind and donate to Arkansas PBS today. Bark. Thanks, George. Appreciate it. At Big Red Stores, we're always proud to sponsor, support, and partner up with many events and activities throughout the community. Among them, high school championships throughout the state of Arkansas. At Big Red Stores, our team members are always ready to assist you to make your visit with us a pleasant one. And at Big Red Stores, we recognize that none of our support or ability to serve the community is possible without you. That's why, at Big Red Stores, you're always the MVP of the Big Red team. Big Red Stores, now more convenient than ever. Centennial Bank is committed to you. Since our founding in 1999, we've become one of the nation's most trusted banks by remembering that you come first. By empowering our communities to reach their highest potential through our dedication to local charity, education, and exceptional service. Because we are proud to call Arkansas home. Banking with you in mind. Centennial Bank. Member FDIC. If you want to relive all the action, all you've got to do is go to youtube.com slash Arkansas PBS starting on Monday. You can watch all five of these championship matches over and over again. We've seen four sweeps today. Is it going to be a fifth as Fayetteville leads Southside 2-0 as set number three is underway? Freeman with the attack from the mid part of the offense. Harp answers back for Fayetteville, though. You can just see the familiarity with these two teams. They know what, what's coming at them. Exactly, and that's why the rallies are so long, because they're being able to read each other so well. It's all about execution. Mm -hmm. Being disciplined in your rotations. Another nice dig on the back roll from Weilert, and the tip from Harp. Finally wins the opening point of set number three. So smart. When, when you play somebody so many times like these two teams have, obviously twice in conference play, and now this is the third time this season, but you saw each other all last or earlier this week in the state tournament. I mean, it, it's you know what the other one's going to do. Exactly. I mean, so there, there's no surprising you at any point. It's just about playing your game better than they're going to play their game at that point. Nice job by Dupree to kind of punch that one cross court, even up this match of one. So Southside has played, I believe it's 38 matches. I believe they're 37 and one. Fayetteville is 36 and two on the season. You're not reinventing yourself in the championship match. I mean, you are who you are. Exactly. The foundation is set. You have all that success. And yeah, no, you're not going to come into the state finals and be a different team. Rockwell with kill number 12 on the night for Fayetteville. Oops. 
Well, the one thing that you have to be most impressed with, though, is just south side defensively at the net. Again, they're much like Fayetteville. They don't have great size as the ace there for Fayetteville. But they elevate and positioning and I guess the discipline is, is what really stands out. Exactly. It's the discipline. It's the reading. And then it's the pressing your hands over the net and being strong because, you know, Fayetteville's got such strong hitters. Feeling. Leads the team in aces with 79 for Fayetteville, but Southside able to return that one, but can't get it across the net. Just was talking about blocking. Meg Gebhardt able to get there, close the block perfectly. Rockwell set that block up nicely, and they converted. Again, the serve not handled well from Southside, and that one's an easy kill for Lafata. That's the best kind of kill. That kill feels the best. The other team gives you a free ball. You're right on the net. You just jump up. You snap your wrist, and yeah, boom, just, it's done. There's no block in front of you. You're used to seeing two and three bodies coming at you, and all of a sudden nobody's there. Exactly. It does make life a little easier for you. <laughs> you can tell the, the block for Fayetteville has gotten ahead of Southside. They're trying to tip more often than not, but that attack goes wide. And you know, that's why you don't want to tip too much because the Fayetteville defense, they're smart. Rockwell has a ton of digs. They're going to start to get those balls up and then, oh, sorry, Rockwell, Phelan, honestly, all of them have a lot of digs, but Rockwell just turning that a little too sharp and it was out. And nice serve there for Southside in the ace. I believe that was Tinsley Freeman, 13, the libero. She's wearing the red uni. And a rogue volleyball on the floor. It just wants to play. It does. <laughs> Lafata, he's blocked at the net. Nice deflection there. And again, Fave answers right back. Both teams putting up walls at the net. Fayetteville can't get enough of that one to get it over. You're almost if you're south side, and granted, you know, maybe this is looking too much into it. You, you, you've kind of struggled with the block. Obviously, Fayetteville's defense is creeping up, looking for the tip. Do you try to attack the back line a little more? 100%. You want to mix in those deep swings, just at least to push them back a little bit more on defense. That way you can open up that tip, that hole again. That was there in the early going for south side, but not so much recently. Again, nice job defensively by the Lady Mavs. Lafata, though, she answers right back, goes cross court. And just the, the side spin on that was, it was right in front of our vantage point. It was tough to defend. Lafata loves that sharp cross court. It's not, it's not too deep, it's not too sharp, it's just right, right in the seam. Yeah. You know, in, in basketball, you can get used to a left handed shooter as that one's hammered home by Pitts. In volleyball, you're, I mean, it's coming at you from so many different angles. How different as a defender is it to, to prepare yourself and tell yourself mentally, okay, this one's left-handed? It, it is very different, especially because during the play, you're not thinking, oh, I remember that this one is left-handed. Like, you expect her to come at it with her right hand because that's the most common. Mm -hmm. And then in the speed of the game, it, it's almost too fast for your brain to register. Yeah, that one goes long, though, from Lafada. And I, I, it, of course, it's, it'd be easier if they were in the same spot. But there's, there's so much rotation, and she plays all across the floor. You don't know where she's coming from. And, of course, you add the, the I guess, the unusual arm angle just because it's, it's not the common one as far as right-handed. There's just a lot of things that, that changes. It's the recipe for success, a left-handed hitter who can play any position. Again, south side with the service error. Seventh of the match. Just kind of cleaned it up just a touch, but those seven have come at critical moments, I feel. Oh, yeah. You really need to eliminate those errors. Serve aggressively. Try and get Fayetteville out of system, but don't give them free points. A quick set, though. Harp, though, didn't time her jump, but threw the south side defense off. And she gets credit for the cheapy. Harp's eighth kill. Hitting over 500. Yep, she's been successful, 8 of 14 on the, the attacks. Lafadas has 11 kills. Rockwell leading the way with 12. That attack goes wide. And Coach Thronebury uh, told us that they're not a team that can suffer too many errors, especially against a team like Fayetteville. They like to force you into making the errors, but it's been the other way around. A little too much for her liking tonight. Even though that was just their ninth attacking error. 
That serve goes into the net. It's the fifth service error for Fayetteville. Yeah, a lot of service errors, but really when it comes down to it, that means they're being aggressive and they're going after it. Fayetteville with the side out percentage of almost 70 percent. Nice job defensively sets up the block there for Southside. Looks like they got a read on that left shoulder a little bit better that time. That front line for, for Southside has been really good. They really have. I would say that's the strong point right now is their blocking. Nice dig by Neal for Southside there. Quick set again for Harp. Tries to tip that one. Didn't catch the line, though, in Southside. And able to tie this match up at nine. That's the grit that Coach Thronberry was talking about. That's the grit that they need if they're going to win. It's okay if they're down by a little bit. You keep going after every single ball. Harp, though, drives that one, but they're going to say it wasn't touched, and it goes long. So Southside going to take a 10-9 lead, but the officials are going to get together and discuss this one. Looks like the up ref isn't really sure, and it looked like the down ref wasn't really sure either. One line judge held his flag up signaling out, but we'll see what they decide. They are going to rule that the was deflected by Southside, which will flip that score back. Fayetteville takes a 10-9 lead and maybe circle that one mentally for you guys at home because that could be a big momentum swing. Instead of Southside taking the lead, it's Fayetteville who's on top and Coach Throneberry not pleased with it. That serve goes wide though, so kind of a moot point as we're tied up at 10. And a lot of the times, if you're south side, you think, well, the ball never lies. People say that a lot in volleyball. The ball does have a brain. Its name is Wilson. <laughs> Feelings attack. Nice dig out on the back line. Rockwell attacks from distance and finds open space there. Nice job by Brooke Rockwell, 13th kill of the eve. That's why it's so good to have so many weapons on offense. You never know who they're going to set. And even if they're out of system, they can still find someone to get a good attack on the ball. Castaway is a very depressing movie, by the way. Oh, I cried my eyes out <laughs> when he lost Wilson. We've got plenty of Wilson balls to go around here inside Banco ZK Arena as that one doesn't get across. Four hits on south side and a 12-10 lead for Fayetteville. Wilson, of course, the official ball of the Triple A. Shameless book. Ella Weilert on service. Quick set there. Nyhaus has been kind of quiet for Southside, and that time they couldn't get the block up. I'm not sure if viewers at home understand how hard it is to do what Kennedy Phelan just did. Barely any approach. Jumping up, getting a lot of height, hitting on two, and just powering through that block. Right. So impressive. The idea is you're going to catch the defense off guard. They think she's going to set it, and she just turns and fires it at the defense. Nice job by Fayetteville to, to rally back and keep the point alive. My house is tipped, is turned away. Rockwell fires one long, 13-11. Rockwell trying to turn that ball down the line because she knows that deep area of the court is open. So just a little, a little out. If you're enjoying tonight's, be sure to stick around. Coming up in December, first two weekends, in fact, the state football championship's going to be live right here on Arkansas PBS. As Rockwell gets another kill to her tally. It's her 14th kill of the night. 40 attempts. That shows you how much they feed her. And, you know, Coach said, that Rockwell is the setter security blanket, and we're seeing that here tonight. We've got all the action all year long with Arkansas PBS. Volleyball, football, of course, basketball coming up in March. Baseball and softball in May as that one goes wide. And Fayetteville starting to expand their lead to touch, 15-11. The Lady Bulldogs just 10 points away from that three-peat. Smart timeout by Coach Throneberry. Southside takes a timeout, and we'll do the same as you're watching the Centennial Bank State Volleyball Championship presented by Everett Buick GMC on Arkansas PBS Sports.
Can you see her greatness? When you attend her games, when you cheer her on, or when you participate in any way, you support your community and make it better, and you will see her greatness. Join us as we pledge to increase the visibility of women's sports in our communities. It makes a difference when we all are involved. At Everett Butte GMC, we proudly support our local female athletes and encourage you to do the same. See her greatness. Banco ZK Arena is the spot, and that's where we are as Southside trying to battle back against Fayetteville, but they're down 0-2 in sets, and they're down 15-11 in set number three. Trying to extend this match. Fayetteville hasn't dropped a set to anybody from the state of Arkansas all year long. And when you're 36-2, you haven't dropped many sets, period. Mm -hmm. Number five in the country, getting to one national poll. Ava keeps it alive. Nice job there defensively. Just extend the point and block, does it? Fayetteville's defense is just as strong as their offense. Their start, oh, excuse me, sorry, Madison. It's the Liberos, Ashley Ruff's third appearance in a state championship game, and ball control is has been huge for Fayetteville as they get that point. Yep, the ball coming right at you. Make a play. Lasker, an athlete. He does it. And you can really start to sense the Fayetteville bench is getting into it. The student section behind them is getting into it. They can sense that championship's not too far away. Rockwell. Nice job by Southside defensively. See if they can respond and, and dug out. No matter where they try to attack, the Fayetteville defense appears to be there. That one, they're going to call a, a two hit. They do. So not a perfect set there by Fiedler. I think the first time we've seen that all night on her. That's what I was going to say. It's okay if she has one because she has had such flawless setting the entire match. 940 assists on the season. Thirty-one tonight, so yeah, we'll give her that one mistake. Yep. Rockwell not going to mistake that one. That one's drilled home. 18-12. Rockwell, 16th kill of the night. She's been so effective. We see here, set outside, cranking it down the line, right in the seam. Feel in serve. And that one hits the antenna, trying to be a little too fine with it. You can do that when you have a six-point lead. And that's down to five. So that's what I was going to say. When you have that buffer, when you have that little cushion, it's okay to go for those serves and have a few misses here and there. Yep, Southside doesn't have that luxury, but a nice serve there from Freeman. It did matter. It's Fayetteville on the attack as soon as they walk in the arena. Lafada's 12th kill of the night. She's second on the team as far as kills. Only five errors. That's really good the stats pretty much reflect the season stats talking about tonight and all of the year Rockwell leads the team in kills Lafada second and that's how they line up on the stat sheet tonight could even take it farther harps and feeling three and four and that's what they're doing on the stat sheet again tonight so Fable is who they are and they're playing like they have all season uh, you know, and it works more times than not no point in changing it mm -hmm. <laughs> Lafada Tries to find a hole in the south side defense. Lady Mass converged with the block just there for Fayetteville time and time again. You can tell it's really taking south side out of their aggressive mode. Exactly, and that's exactly what you want out of a block. Yep. Nice job there, though, by Pitts. Her ninth kill of the night, but hitting just about 100. That's Fayetteville block has a lot to do with that. Yep, she's got that really sharp hit right there. That was really good. Nice job by Pitts there. That's one of those freebies you talked about, Madison. You see, when they've got no block in front of you, you're going to take advantage of those. 19-16, so Fayetteville's lead trim to three. Southside trying to stay alive. Just too much. A nice touch there from Phelan. 
behind her, and LaFada drills it right into the teeth of the Southside defense, but didn't matter. Too much mustard on it. Five points away for the Lady Bulldogs. Yep, that middle blocker couldn't quite get over to her outside hitter in time to seal that block, and she got tooled. A nice serve there. Just ticks the net, though, from Ruff. Feeling a quick set to Hart. Southside keeps it alive. Don't give Fayetteville a free ball. Nice attack there, Libby Lindsay. We haven't called her name a ton, but the 5'8 senior took advantage right there. It's her third kill of the eve. 21-16. Fayetteville's hitting percentage has gone up a lot. They're almost hitting 300 now on the set. Fayetteville as a team for the year hitting 329, and that one catches too much of the net, doesn't get over. 329 as a team. Good, great, exceptional. How would you classify that? Exceptional, fantastic. Because you take into account every single hitter on the team. I mean, that is absolutely incredible, and I'm sure Fayetteville can, can smell the win yeah. at this point. 329 hitting as a team. This is the 11th finals appearance in the last 20 years for Fayetteville, and they certainly appear poised to claim title number seven. They won it in 2012. They had a three-peat from 15, 16, and 17, and they're about to cap off a second three-peat, 2020, 2021. And obviously, this is almost the end of 2022. Southside, though, and I mean, it's, it's amazing. I mean, you, th you think of the talent that's gone through. Of course, Steve Hauser built the program. They won titles in the late 90s and the, and the zeros, and they won a bunch of them. Eight state championships for Southside. Four finals appearance in the last five years. Whether it was Conway, whether it was Bentonville, Fayetteville, just haven't seemed to have been able to get over the hump. And, and that's such a shame because it's such a feat to get here. They do need to celebrate that. And they are playing really good here tonight. They're just playing against an anomaly of a yeah. Fayetteville team. Yeah, you're, you're playing against a generational type team. And I can say that now that this match is creeping towards conclusion, but Southside not going away as Pitts puts that one down. I mean, I mean there is serious conversation. Is this the best one ever? You know, of course, you know, it's always about, you know, that recency bias. And you're always going to say the one that is in front of you is the best ever. But, you know, 37 and two, likely going to finish as a top five national poll. It's hard to argue. Oh, yeah. And a lot of their players are going D1. I mean, you come across a team like that once in a blue moon. Yep, five players in all from Fayetteville's roster committed to play at Division I, a few more to Division II and NAIA. And most of Southside's roster, well, they're coming back. they got a lot of young talent, so don't be surprised if you see the Lady Maz back here in Hot Springs next year. Nice attack there. And Fayetteville starting to feel it, 23-17. Lindsay Libby heating up. Great spot right in the seam between two players. That's her fourth kill of the night. Mafata with the serve. Nice attack there from Dupree. That's one of those talented sophomores we were talking about. You, you can see it, her and Pitts. I mean, the foundation is certainly there for Coach Throneberry in the future. I mean, nobody was ever going to accuse Southside of this cupboard being bare. They're good every year. But they're certainly going to be one of the best contentions. we got a, another rogue ball. And yeah, the potential is all over this team. And the fact that a lot of them are sophomores, we're probably going to see them the next year and the year after that. They have so much room to grow and develop. And the fact that they're 18, 13, 18 23, sorry, with a really good Fayetteville team is very impressive. Yeah. That one put down from Fayetteville. And now the Lady Bulldogs just one point away from capping off their season where many of them expected to, and that's going to be on top of the podium and receiving that championship trophy. Weilert's the senior. I'm going to serve it up. That attack. Wow. Nice job defensively dug that one out. Mia Bedke. And that one's going to do it as the Fayetteville Lady Bulldogs get it done. 25-18 in set number three. And the coaches hug, the players dogpile, pun intended for the Lady Bulldogs. <laughs> in Fayetteville, back to back to back, 6A state champions. It's only fitting that Rockwell delivers the final blow. 
her 18th kill of the night. Fantastic game, honestly, by everyone on the court. Such high level volleyball and really just shows you the future of Arkansas high school volleyball is very bright. You, you hear about a ranking coming into a match and you never know what you're going to see. And sometimes, maybe oftentimes, you're disappointed. You're not disappointed in what you saw from Fable tonight. Oh my goodness, no, not at all. I think my mouth gaped open far too many times. So athletic, so powerful. And even though there's not a ton of height, it doesn't matter because they make up for it with their jumps. So explosive south side, nothing to be ashamed about. They just ran into a team that's, you can call them a juggernaut. So we're going to step aside. Trophy presentation coming up as you've been watching the Centennial Bank State Volleyball Championship presented by Everett Buick GMC. Can you see her greatness? When you attend her games, when you cheer her on, or when you participate in any way, you support your community and make it better, and you will see her greatness. Join us as we pledge to increase the visibility of women's sports in our communities. It makes a difference when we all are involved. At Everett Butte GMC, we proudly support our local female athletes and encourage you to do the same. See her greatness. Centennial Bank is committed to you. Since our founding in 1999, we've become one of the nation's most trusted banks by remembering that you come first. By empowering our communities to reach their highest potential through our dedication to local charity, education, and exceptional service. Because we are proud to call Arkansas home. Banking with you in mind. Centennial Bank, member FDIC. Uh, welcome back into Bank OZK Arena. Southside just received their state runner-up trophy in Fayetteville. Well, they're about to receive what they came for. That is the 6A state championship trophy. Executive Director Nick, excuse me, Assistant Executive Director Nick Lasker about to hand out the hardware. And the business trip is done for the Lady Bulldogs. And they went on their business trip and they took care of business Reagan Harp, 10 kills. Brooke Rockwell, 17 kills. Madeline LaFada, 13 kills. We'll hear from Coach Jessica Phelan in just a moment, along with the MVP, which is going to be announced momentarily. And I mean, you can look at the numbers. You can look at the hitting percentages. I mean, offensively, they're very good. Defensively, they played great at times at the net. Oh, yeah. I mean, all around. And that's what you get from a championship team. You have just as strong of a back row as you do a front row, you have just as strong a setter that has great connections with all of her hitters. They used so many different weapons tonight. Kennedy Phelan named the, the games from the state tournament's most valuable player. And, uh, we had a chance to talk with Coach Phelan, and we're going to get her side of it. Uh, her daughter, we haven't mentioned that. That's, that is her daughter. Uh, they just played their last match together, wrote her a letter, wrote a letter to her coach, to her mom, and gave it to her on senior night. And Coach Phelan said she hasn't had the guts to open it yet. Said she might open it on the bus ride home tonight. So, of course, we're going to ask her about that as they're going to make their way over to the table in just a moment. So kind of final thoughts on this match, Madison. Fayetteville, so good. Southside, so young and talented. I mean, this, this is elite high school volleyball. People are going to, you know, read the newspaper tomorrow, go online and see it was a sweep a lot closer than necessarily 3-0 is going to indicate. Oh, 100%. I think Southside needs to leave with their heads held high. They have so much potential. They played so good. They had a ton of grit, which is what the coach said she wanted them to have, and they need to all leave with their heads held high. Fantastic season, fantastic record on the season, and fantastic showing in the state tournament. Let's take a look at some overall stats in this championship match as Fayetteville completes the sweep 3-0. 37 and 2 is the final record for the Lady Bulldogs. Well, Southside is going to end the year at 31 and 7. And you can see the digs and the kill advantage for Fayetteville, and that certainly looks like numbers of a team that completed a 3 0 sweep. Oh, yeah, 100%. Those numbers are fantastic. 80 digs by Fayetteville, 51 kills. Those are some high numbers. And that just shows you the high level of volleyball that Arkansas High School has and will continue to have in the future. Yeah, the attack's pretty equal there. And that just shows you, uh, one, how good the block was. So just three more attacks for Fayetteville, but 21 more kills. A lot of that has to do with the block. And I think Southside got out of their, their attack mode. It almost looked like they were a little gun shy at the net because they were turned away or so many balls deflected right at the net. Exactly. And that's what you see sometimes with underdogs. They can either bow up and say, okay, I'm going to try and tool you. I know you're bigger than me. I'm going to try and hit off your hand or you can go and creep into that that tip 
type of way, but and that's what Southside kind of did here. Yeah. All right, so we're going to be joined by the most valuable player in the state tournament, Kennedy Phelan, as she puts the headset on here at the scorer's table. And Kennedy, one, congratulations. Thank but you so two, much. what does it mean to cap off your career with a third state championship? It's pretty surreal. I mean, we've been playing together since we were 12. And um, to have this experience with your best friends is just, I mean, to finish that way is incredible. You know, watching you guys play, it's obvious that you guys have been playing together since you were little kids. Mm -hmm. It's, it's a, just a fluid motion. It looks like the ball just does, doesn't even touch your fingers. It's, it's just like a well-oiled machine, and yeah. it's tough to stop. Yeah, it's, it's pretty incredible. It's a really fun group to play with. How did it feel when you got that final point? It was um, just... <laughs> crazy I mean we've been dreaming of it forever and it just finally went down and it was just a great feeling to do this obviously three state championships at the largest classification in the state's impressive to have the 37 and 2 records impressive top five nationally is impressive mm -hmm. what's it what's it mean to do it when your mom's the head coach and, and to go out this way with with her on the sideline with you I mean it's everything we could have hoped for it's I mean incredible it's an incredible lead talented group to play with and it's just it's been crazy congratulations enjoy this one with your team thank you i will all right we're going to bring in coach Phelan uh, in just a second well, madison this one is just i mean you can't yeah. des describe this one anymore as coach Phelan's going to join us here at the table and coach we're going to put you on the spot you know three straight state championships to win this one yeah. Got to be a little more special with your daughter as a senior in her final match to go out a winner. You know, these girls have played a lot of volleyball together um, over the years. And, um, you know, their connection goes beyond volleyball. We have 14 seniors, and this is exactly where they wanted to end um, this magical season. I mean, they haven't dropped a set um, to anyone in Arkansas this year. And we certainly were tested there, um, you know, tonight. So I think... You know, for me as a coach, I'm just super proud of their, like, collective energy and effort. And for them, it's always been about, like, we over me and the group. And so it's been it's been a joy for sure. So we were talking about it earlier. Do you think that you're going to read the letter that your daughter wrote you on the bus ride home? <laughs> um, yeah, I think I think I, it's probably time. I've been putting yeah. it off for a week or so. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's been a special time, you know, as a coach. When your kids are young, sometimes you have to miss a lot of stuff. Yeah. And so I think, you know, over the last few years, we've got to gain some of that time back. And so it's been it's been a sweet ride with her and her buddies. Yeah. So I'm going to put you on the spot with this one. Not about, yeah. not about the family. I mean, you guys yeah. were expected. You guys had the, the target on your back yeah. all year long. You were expected to win. You played a loaded schedule. We talked about the national tournament you yeah. played. To come in and run the table in Arkansas, as you mentioned, not lose a set to the in-contact competition. Southside's very good. It, yeah. it was obvious. But to come out and to complete the task today, that's got to be really gratifying. For sure. It's like it's gratifying. It's exciting. It's part relief and yeah. um, it's just like I wanted this for them so bad because they've worked so hard over the years and um, you know when no one's watching when it's not the moments like this they really have um, put in the time and so you know I'm just super excited. Yeah. Coach I appreciate your time congratulations yeah, on you. another state championship. Thank you. So, all right. Thank you. That's Jessica Phelan state championship number seven for Fayetteville all since 2012 and the second three peats. Fayetteville wins it. You see the score there, 3-0. They don't give up a set to anybody in the state of Arkansas all season long. So Madison Fitzpatrick has been here all day, called all five state championship matches. And Madison, I mean, your takeaway from this one all day long. Obviously, three, five sweeps. The last match, the 5A game, could have gone a thousand different directions. This game really felt like it could have gone a lot of different directions. What would your takeaway from state championship Saturday? Takeaway all around. The level of volleyball is growing astronomically the, the longer that it's been around in Arkansas the level of volleyball in Arkansas is just growing the athleticism of all these girls the heart that they put into it it really was such a fun atmosphere and it it really was such a fun thing to be a part of to yeah. see the sport grow and then to see all the hard work pay off that's big words coming from a former college star herself so that's Madison Fitzpatrick I'm Bobby Swafford big thank you to everybody back in the truck from Arkansas PBS also a big thanks to Centennial and Everett Buick GMC for making today possible and we are just getting started with Arkansas PBS sports for this athletic year football championships not that far away playoffs actually start in less than two weeks and we'll be at War Memorial Stadium the first two weekends in December, bringing all the championship action from eight man all the way up to class 7A. 
and we're going to bring it to you right here live on Arkansas PBS. Appreciate you spending your Saturday with us. And one final goodbye from Bank OZK Arena as you've been watching the Centennial Bank State Volleyball Championship presented by Everett Buick GMC on Arkansas PBS Sports.